All right. How are you guys doing today? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good to be with you. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, my name is Mark, and it's so good to be here with you guys. Uh, we've been doing a series called Taking Responsibility for Your Life, and it's, it's really all about God's desire for us to experience freedom. And the way that we experience freedom is, is we stop blaming other people, we stop comparing ourselves with other people, and we instead choose to begin to take responsibility for what's been entrusted to us. Whenever we take responsibility, we're, we're actually walking in power. When we blame and we compare, we're actually giving away power, and what God wants us to experience is freedom in every area of our life. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Free. He wants us to walk in it. He wants us to experience the joy and the satisfaction of it. And that's why uh, you enjoy it so much when you set your mind to be the best parent, the best adult, uh, the best spouse, the best coworker, the best team member that you can be. When you take responsibility for that, it feels awesome when you do that because you were actually created for it. And, uh, and today I want to uh, talk to you about uh, something that we all experienced when we were growing up. So uh, you remember like when uh, the family would order a pizza and your mom or dad would cut up those pieces and give out the, the, the slices to everybody and you realize suddenly that your slice was smaller than the other slices around you? Every kid says the same thing when we have that happen. We say, that's not fair, right? And, uh, and, and the fact is, is, is uh, we really don't want what's fair because... When we get the bigger slice, we don't go, hey, that's not fair, yeah. right? When I end up with the bigger slice, I go, all is right with the universe. Things are as they should be. Thank you, God. You've bestowed upon me exactly what is right, right? So we don't care about fairness until our slice is smaller than everybody else's. That's when it's important to us. And, and in life, there are going to be times when, when things seem unfair. Uh, we might even say it this way, that it's uneven, that some people just are born into more privilege, more opportunity uh, than other people. Other people have things that have st were stacked against them from the time that they were little. And, and, it, and, and the difficulty is this, is that when you've got the big slice... And, and you're happy with that, and, and you've had all the opportunity, and maybe you were born into the right family, and maybe you had great parents that were just there to encourage you, and you had the educational opportunities, and, and you had the business, and you did really well. The difficulty is, is the more you have, sometimes that can become an excuse for being irresponsible. Sometimes the more you have, it came so easily that it doesn't matter as much to you, and it's easy to waste what it is that you've been given. And, and at other times, when, when you've been given the small slice, right, it's easy to become irresponsible because you go, well, hey, I didn't have what they had, and, and so uh, I can't be expected to be able to be responsible with what I have because I never had anything to begin with. And it's easy to choose to be irresponsible that way, too. And, and, the, and the problem is, is whenever we choose to not be responsible, it begins to, to erode our self-respect. When our self-respect is gone, we find ways to, to try to compensate or medicate, and nothing ever leads to anything good when we begin to go down that road. And so what God wants for all of us is to be able to experience a sense of confidence, a sense of, of satisfaction, a sense of, of making a difference, because regardless of whether I think life is fair or unfair, or whether it's even or uneven, that I've learned to take responsibility for that which has been entrusted to me. Because life is never going to be fair, right? I mean, if we make it our goal to try to make life fair for everybody, are we ever going to make that happen? No. It's never going to happen. We can't make life even for everybody. Life isn't fair. Opportunities aren't fair. The real question is this. The question isn't, how can we make life fair for everybody? The question is, how will I respond to the fairness or unfairness? How will I respond to the opportunities that are given to me, period? That's the only thing that matters. And so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to jump into uh, Jesus talking about this very issue today. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 25. And I want to give you a little context first. 
Matthew uh, 24, uh, before this uh, chapter, Jesus is talking about the signs of the end of the world and his return. Jesus is in Matthew 24 talking about what's going to be going on in the world when he comes back again. It's a, it's a cornerstone, foundational uh, teaching of Jesus that after he would be crucified and after he'd be raised from the dead, that there's going to come a point in time when Jesus Christ is going to return. And so that's Matthew 24. So in Matthew 25, what he's doing is he's saying this, until I come back, between the time that I, that I ascend to heaven and I return, here's what I want you to focus on. Here's how I want you to be prepared for my return. Here's what I want you to be thinking about. And so that's the context. So in Matthew 25, starting in verse 14, Jesus said this, he said, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. So, so he's entrusting it. He's expecting them to manage the money as he would. He's expecting them to do that. He gave five bags of silver to one two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to what? To their abilities. Look, based on what they've already done, he's entrusting them with these things. Now, some of you may have uh, grown up in church, and you remember this as the parable of the talents, okay? And, and some of you go, well, hey, wasn't it gold? Well, actually, the, the word is probably silver that's used there. It doesn't really say, but it does talk about talents, a talent is about 70 pounds, okay? So if you kind of calculated the value of it in silver, you'd be looking at uh, five bags being $75,000, uh, two bags being $30,000, and one bag being $15,000. Now, when he gave that out to them, was it even? No, it wasn't even, right? Was it fair? It wasn't about fairness. It was, it was uneven, the servant who received the five bags of silver, $75,000, immediately began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver, $30,000, also went to work, just no delay, went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag, the $15,000 of silver, dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. Now, here's the key. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money, how they used what he had given them, how they had used the opportunity that was given to them. Uneven, yes. Opportunity, yes. How did they use it? The servant to whom he had entrusted five bags of silver came forward with five more, said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. You entrusted it to me, I invested it. The master, check out his heart, the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's what? Let's celebrate together. You see the master's heart? You did great. You did well. I wanted you to succeed. I wanted you to experience what it was like when you took responsibility for what I entrusted to you. This is exactly what I had been hoping for. This is exactly what I wanted for you. And together we can celebrate. This is awesome. And he says, you've taken the, the small amount. Now, was that a small amount that he gave him? Well, compared to the opportunity that he was looking forward to, it was. Compared to all that the master had to offer, it was a small amount. He's saying, I gave you a small amount. It's small to me. And I wanted to see what you did with the small amount I gave you. And because you are faithful, I'm now going to give you many more responsibilities. Now, here's the problem. Sometimes when we hear the word responsibilities, we think burdens, right? Don't think of responsibilities that way. Responsibilities are opportunities, Responsibility is an opportunity for you to experience 
what it feels like to succeed, to do well, to know that you're fulfilling what you were created to do. And he's saying, because you've been faithful with the small amount I've given you, because you've taken the opportunity that I gave to you, I'm going to give you even more opportunity because of that. So he's full of praise. His heart is there. Look at this, verse 22, that the servant who had received two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I've earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities, opportunities. Let's celebrate together. This is my heart for you. My heart for you is that you would succeed. My heart for you is that you would do well. My heart for you is that you would be able to experience even more because of what you've done with what I've entrusted to you. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops that you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, your money, look, here is your money back. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, you know what? I know that you're unfair. You're unfair, so what I did is I took what you've given me and what you've entrusted to me, and I put it where I don't have to look at it and where I don't have to think about it because all I need to do is call you unfair. And I don't have to do anything else. I'm not responsible for what you've entrusted to me. It's because of you that I'm not doing anything with it. And the master looks at him, and he, and he, and he exposes the fallacy of his logic. It says that, that when he had said this, the master replied, you wicked and lazy. So he says, the problem isn't me. The problem is you're lazy. The problem is, is you refuse to take responsibility. The problem is, is you decide that you're going to use my, what you consider unfairness, as an opportunity for you to do nothing. He says, you wicked and lazy servant, if you knew that I harvested crops that I didn't plant and gathered crops that I didn't cultivate, if you knew that I was a harsh man, if you knew, if, if you really believed that that's the way I was, then what you would have done is you would have deposited my money in the bank. Why didn't you deposit in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. And he's exposing the lie and the illogic of the man, of the servant's own argument. What he's saying is, you, re, you call me unfair. And you use that as an excuse to not make the opportunity count. And it's unacceptable. And so the master go, goes on to say this. He said, then the, he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. Now, would you have given it to the one who had ten bags? Or would you have given it to the one who had four? Or would you have split the two and given half to each of them? Was it fair what he just did? No. Was it even? No. Doesn't have to be. It's not about what we look at as fair or what we look at as even. It's not about making things fair and making them even. It's all about what you do with the opportunity that God is entrusting to you. That's the only thing you can take responsibility for. Not the opportunity. You can't make it. But you do always get to choose how you're going to respond to the opportunity. He gives this principle. He says, to those who use well what they are given... Even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The, the weeping and gnashing of teeth is the picture of someone who was inside. He was an insider. He was a servant in the home where all the good things were happening. He was in a place where opportunity was being given. And because he chose to not use the opportunity wisely, to not take responsibility, he's now outside of the opportunities. He's now on the outside looking in. He's now living with regret. He's now living with frustration with himself. 
He's living with a blown opportunity. So what's the point of all this? Here's the point. You and I, we've all been entrusted with something, haven't we? We've all been given opportunities. Have they been even? Nope. Have they been fair? Not necessarily. It's not about fairness. It's not about evenness. It's only about what it is that you and I choose to do. Because one day, one day, we will give an account for how we used what God has given us. And so when we look around, you see that oftentimes we see people and we go, oh, that's a five-bagger. That person, they came from the right family, right? They had the right parents. They had the right inheritance. They had the right education. They had the right business opportunities. They made all the right decisions because they had good mentors. Man, look at how far they've come. And, and the temptation for five baggers is that you can squander it because it's coming to you so easily. And there's so much of what it is that you have that every incremental amount just doesn't have a lot of value to you. And, and that's an issue. You know, we see this happening all the time. We see it with professional athletes, don't we? Listen to these figures. Terrell Owens, 15 years in the NFL, went to the Pro Bowl six times. He massed a fortune of $80 million in his career. In 2012, he filed for bankruptcy. Listen to this. Mike Tyson, the boxer? You know how much money Mike Tyson earned in his career? $400 million. Yet in 2003, he declared bankruptcy, declaring that he owed $27 million more than what he actually had. Now we look at that and we go, five baggers. What in the world happened? Well, they chose not to take responsibility. But then at the same time, there are those who do take responsibility. People that we can look to. People like, like uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett with the Bill Gates Foundation. Where they challenge billionaires to give their money away. And where they, they put it in a foundation and they help causes in the United States and all around the world. That foundation has $40 billion that they're investing all around the world. We have five baggers right here. People that came from, like a friend of mine, Paul, had a great dad, great education, great business sense, great opportunities, built nine different businesses, sold them off, helped uh, a, a school for underprivileged children to get built and to grow. Could have taken all that stuff and, and in his 50s, just said, I'm going to sail around the world. I'm just going to take the rest of my life off. I'm going to go play golf for the rest of my life. Could have chosen to do, to do that. But he had what I call a halftime experience. He had a stroke and a heart attack. And he realized, you know what? I believe in Jesus, but I haven't surrendered to Jesus. And looked at his life and realized, I've been given another chance. I'm alive for a reason. And then made up his mind that he was going to invest the rest of his life in helping people to come to know Jesus, in helping uh, Christian organizations to grow, in helping to mentor men to be able to move forward in their lives. And he takes his time and he does all that stuff. Why? Because he had a halftime experience. And he realized, you know what? That was the first half of my life over there. What am I going to do with the rest of my life? Some of you in this room have had a halftime experience where something happened in your life and you had been doing well by everybody else's standards, but when you hit that halftime, something inside of you went, what in the world am I going to do with the rest of my life? And when you get a halftime experience, it's a gift from God. And it's a time to ask the question, how am I going to invest what I've been given? What am I going to do with the opportunities that I've been given? How am I going to serve God with the things that have been entrusted to me? What am I going to do? People like, like the gentleman who, who uh, owns several businesses up in uh, Minnesota, the reason that we're able to be online by video is because he had built businesses and their, their corporation now is completely committed to helping ministries grow and to help get the word of God out, the love of Jesus to be broadcast. And so they're the ones that underwrote our whole video ministry. That was possible because somebody looked at their lives and said, how can I make this count? How can I take the opportunities that, have been, that I've been given to mentor other people? Just met with another man this past week who, who, who sat down with me and he's, 
built businesses, sold businesses, semi-retired. They could, do, they could take the rest of their lives and just travel around the world and kick back. He and his wife started a foundation. And they said, what we want to do is we want to take what God has taught us and invest in other ministries and help them to learn how to be able to reach more people and how to be more effective. Five baggers that have chose to do great things with what they've been given. And then there are those that we would call two baggers, just average people. Maybe didn't come from the best background, maybe had some struggles growing up, but kind of average people that are making a difference all the time because they've simply looked at what it is that they've received from God through a relationship with him and decided to make it count. One of those people is Kyle Steele. Kyle Steele right here. The re- we met Kyle because he was cleaning our pool. And just talked to Kyle and shared with Kyle, got to know Kyle. Kyle ended up coming here, and, and Kyle ended up really connecting the dots and understanding God's love. Many of you will know Kyle when you see him. Take a look. Hi, my name's Kyle Steele. I work ground facility crew and guest services. Oh, I come in early in the morning, uh, set the flags and the signs out. Well, I would sit in the back row, not say a word, and, uh, you know, come and go. But uh, ever since getting involved, I met a lot of good people, and ever since then, I've just met more and more people, and that's what I enjoy the most, is all the good people I've met that are in my life now that, you know, just positive influence, because I came from a not-so-great place before I got here. It brings me joy to be here and do that kind of work. I enjoy it. Sometimes it sounds silly, but, you know, blowing off the parking lot is actually fun. <laughs> I, can't, I can't explain that, but it is. The feeling you get from it is unexplainable, and, and the people you meet also, when you do that, you just, it, it opens so many doors for you, and makes you feel so good, and, and it brings joy to God. I would say just just do it, you know, give it a shot. It's not gonna hurt you, you're not losing anything. You can only gain from it, so it's a very good thing to do. And so every Sunday, what's Kyle doing? He's really setting the table for us, isn't he? And it gives him joy to be able to do that. And, and, And that's Kyle. And then there are those that, are, that we would call one-bangers, people that maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't come from the, 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 the family, the background, didn't have the opportunities. Maybe you've gone through divorce. Maybe you're a single parent. Maybe you've got a disability. Maybe you didn't have a, a much of an education or you were raised in a foster home or you struggled in school. And a danger for the people that are one-bangers is that you'll be tempted to make excuses of why you don't need to take responsibility because after all, you didn't have what other people had and and life has been so unfair to you. But there are people that look at what they've been given and they begin to decide that I'm going to make a difference with what has been entrusted to me. Like a young man named Joey who I visited for the first time in the hospital when he had gotten in a serious accident and he lost use of his his, uh, right arm. And, and yet every week, Joey could have decided that with the pain that he lives with, that he could just medicate himself, he could just check out of life. And instead, what Joey does is Joey's a part of our tech team now. And every single week, Joey's heart for you is this, is that you would be able to experience an inviting environment where God could speak to you and touch your heart. And he's the one that controls all the lighting up here. And that's Joey right up there, guys. Hey, Joey. Or someone like my good friend Davis, who was up here a few years ago talking about growing up, not understanding what was wrong with him, doing poorly in school, not under being able to read, not being able to to understand what was being taught, learning how to try to make it through, getting so discouraged when he was in college, not being able to comprehend things to the point where he was suicidal. He was just ready to end it all. And then Davis learned that he had something called dyslexia. And rather than take that as something that he would just check out and say, that's it, that's the problem, instead what he did is he began to learn how to leverage technology that would be able to read books for him that he could learn from. He began to to, to push beyond the low feelings of self-esteem that he had carried for so long. 
And, and just recently, last month, Davis graduated from Brandeis University with a Master's of Science in Health and Medical Informatics. And if you ask Davis, here's what he's going to tell you, dyslexia is a gift, something that God has given you that you can do something with. And, and Davis is so inspired and so moved to be able to make a difference with what has happened to him in his life that he is now going to be leading a small group for families that, is, that struggle with the issue of dyslexia, for students that have a hard time learning, that don't know how to use technology to their advantage. He's starting a small group now because he's like, I want other people to experience what I've experienced. And regardless of where you're at in the spectrum, whether you're a five-bagger, whether you're a two-bagger, whether you're a one-bagger, ultimately the, the unevenness and the seeming unfairness of life is not something that we can ever hide behind. It's not something that we can put off. Because we have got a heavenly Father who loves us and is waiting for us to experience what it is to make a difference. A heavenly Father who wants to celebrate with you. A heavenly Father who's given you opportunity that whatever it is that you have been dealing with in your life can be a foundation to change the lives of other people. And you and I have a heavenly Father that is just wanting to cheer you on and to celebrate when you and I take responsibility for what has been entrusted to us. And what that person has, or that person has, or that person has, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what has been placed in your hands. What experiences have you had that you can help other people with? What resources, what abilities do you have that you can pour into the lives of other people to be able to make a difference? The most important passage in that verse is that after a long time, the master came back so that the servants could give an account with what they did, with what he had given them. And that's where we are. And so until Christ comes back, you and I have an amazing opportunity. And the question is, have you taken responsibility for what God has given you? How are you using it to make a difference in the lives of other people? How are you doing it to point people to the love of Jesus Christ? When you and I take responsibility, one day we'll stand before God and we're going to hear these words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's celebrate. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your passion for us. To experience, God, the deep sense of satisfaction and meaning and purpose that we're living out the lives that you've created us to live. That, Lord, no matter whether it's been one bag, two bags, five bags, that each one of us, Lord, takes what you've given us and is able to make this world a better place, pointing people to you, giving people hope, encouraging people, helping them to overcome the way that you've taught us to overcome. And Lord, may you open up our eyes to what it is you've placed in each one of us to do. And God, we look forward with anticipation to the day when we can celebrate with you all that you've done in and through us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, guys. I still got thanks. Thank you.